I guess I should, you know, should start this off by saying, you know, congratulations on the Oak Room. You know, it's had, uh, you know, really good reception. You know, have you, are you, you pleased with how the film's gone down? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's funny. It, it definitely went above and beyond my expectations. Like we, it was sort of like a, a little indie experiment, you know, to do something so, you know, all set in one place and really built on conversation rather than plot. Um, and just to, to, to find, or, or just the fact that it found an, an audience is, uh, it's, it, it's amazing. I think before we, you know, before we delve into, into Vicious Fun, I was reading that you have quite an interesting story about how you got funding for your first film. Can you, uh, can you tell us about that? Um, I don't, it was that a, that was, a, <laughs> I feel like I made have made that up. <laughs> it involves a, a car, something, something to do with you working as a valet. And there was a... Oh yeah, 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 that was that was a that was a big joke. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, I guess obviously you know we'll, we'll move uh, you know straight on to, to vicious fun. I mean the name is you know it's such a great title. You know, where did the idea for the film come from? Um, so it's it's funny. It started with the title. Um, I uh, I wrote it down in a in a in a notebook thinking it would make a, you know, a great, a great title for, for a, a genre, um, something ideally that, that would land in sort of the fun comedic realm. And then uh, we started just sort of developing ideas and we knew we wanted to make something that was sort of um, kind of encompassed a, a whole bunch of, of killers. Um, and we sort of by deduction found the best way to do that would be to have this bizarre support group and then, uh, you know, throwing in a, a, a magazine writer kind of kind of felt like it would just sort of write itself and, and write in the situations that would come out of it would uh, would be great. So, yeah, it was it all started with the with the title. And I mean, you know, the film set in the 80s. Why did you uh, why did you just decide on that decade? Um, well, we quickly realized when we were writing the first draft that we were homaging all of these films that we that we grew up on and it just felt weird um because originally joel had like a laptop and a phone and it was it was set in you know in the modern day and it just felt weird to homage all these 80s movies and and not be there so we uh we decided to set it in the 80s and obviously there was a a fear just with people thinking that we were jumping on the bandwagon of stranger things but i think our approach to to the way we homaged it is 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 different than than what they were doing. Yeah, and I mean, saying it in the eighties also, you know, gives you the the perfect opportunity, you know, to to crack out all the all the neon lighting, all the you know the all the synth score, you know, all the things that made you know eighties eighties movies so great. You know, this is such a colourful film. I guess you know, in contrast to the Oak Room, which obviously came before, which was more you know natural colours and that. Was it was it fun to you know just cut loose on this one? Yeah, like I think, I mean, I, t I tend to put a lot of neon lights in all the movies I do to the point where a lot of usually there's production designers or my, you know, my DP, uh, Jeff Mahar will be like, okay, less neon. So this was like, this was the time that everybody was like, okay, cool, Cody, you can just, you can go nuts. So it really felt like uh, visually, um, it was nice to be, to, to do something that was like instinctual, like it was all stuff that I, that I loved and, and it was, it was awesome. It was like, a, again, the whole movie was fun to shoot. It was fun to make. It was like a big playground. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the, uh, the experience that comes off when you're, when you're sat at home watching it. So it's, you know, it's good to hear awesome. that it wasn't set. And I mean, the film, you know, it does feature these serial killers. They're all sort of like parodies, pastiches on, you know, on famous serial killers, but they are also sort of mixed in with, the big bads of the of the movies of the 80s you know how much work did you guys put into sort of matching up you know this movie killer with this this sort of sits, fits with this serial killer and you know creating these you know unique sort of hybrids so there was yeah there was a lot of uh, like i i think at the beginning we had there was a lot more serial killers and we we were sort of homaging as many as we as we could and then we sort of narrowed it down to the ones that sort of made it through through development um, of who we who we thought were the best but I think it was about finding 
like certain people, like obviously Mike is, is your Jason. And so finding certain ones like that and then being not so obvious with the other ones. So it was about sort of combining, you know, slashers that we've, that we've seen in, in, in horror movies and then like real life serial killers and sort of finding that, that combination within the same characters, but also letting each character kind of kind of take over whether they were more like the movie or more like real life, like sort of just letting that balance that way. I mean, you know, you, you know, you sort of mentioned, you know, you've got a, you know, a, a film writer as of, you know, as your hero. Is that your, uh, you know, your way of sort of sweetening the uh, the critics up that are watching it at home, going, look, guys, you know, you're going to live through this one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was funny. I was when we were making, I was like, I'm either I'm either opening myself up to like a lot of criticism, or or maybe maybe I'll get a lot of reviewers to 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 side with me because he he makes it out in the end. Um, but no, it was, it was funny. I, again, like I was, as I was saying it, it felt like the perfect situation to sort of stick a horror movie writer in a, in a horror movie. I mean, again, you're working with, um, with Ari Millen and you guys have been, you know, been friends for years. And I, when I was watching it, I can't help but think that, you know, that trust and that, that you guys have built up over the years, you know, really sort of works here because you know he has to go to some some crazy places so it must you know it must help that you guys you know have known each other for so long and like he knows that you know there's nothing that he can do will be too silly for you yeah well it's it's also our our sense of humor growing up and stuff i think i think he really knew that i mean the the handcuffs were off and he kind of kind of was able to do whatever whatever he wanted to do with the character. But the, the, the other great part about it is when I was developing the idea years ago, and it was just a treatment, he had, he had read it then and we had had some discussions about it. So he's, he's sort of been playing Bob for, for a long time. So he got to really, really think about it. And, and, and we got to decide his approach long before we ever, uh, we ever went to camera. So that was, that was great to be able to, to have that ability, especially on a budget like this. To have that much development time, and obviously, you know, he was obviously he was already on board from early on. But how did you go around um, getting your other guys? You know, because you've got some there's some very familiar faces of you know of TV and film. You know, you've got Julian Witchings in there, and yeah, I so Julian and Robert Maye, um, both of those guys, I wrote the parts for them. So I had um, I've worked with them. I worked with them a, a few years ago. Um, on on a on another film and and so when I was developing this idea it was it was that was written for Julian the other part was written for for Robert and then a lot of the other actors were were people that Ari had worked with or the the our casting director um, Ashley Hallahan who's a, who's amazing um, people that she had just worked with and stuff like that so it was a lot of like word of mouth so the casting was um, it came together um, pretty uh, pretty quick. Which was which is great. And what was the uh, the shoot length? Because am I right in thinking that this film, sort of the production was done pre-COVID, but then the post was one of the films that sort of had to get done remotely. Yeah, so we we shot for twenty two days, and then um, and then our post schedule sort of was just up and down every day. It was like, okay, you you know, we're going to color correct these days because we can go in and then something would come out and it's like, nope, you can't go, can't go in and stuff like that. But yeah, it was, uh, it was 22 days. So tight for something like this, but, uh, but doable. I mean, there's, there's so much potential in the film for spin-offs and sequels, you know, you're hoping that at some point in the future, you might get to, to revisit this world. Yeah, it's funny. I, I've done a sequel to, to, um, to the first film I, I did, I um, we did a, we did a sequel, and I swore I would never I would never do that again. But this world and these characters were just so fun that uh, I would definitely consider it. And there's been yeah we've 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 chatted the the companies behind it um, liked it so much, and we'll we'll see how it does on on Shutter. But if it does really well, then I could see us I could see us doing a sequel to it for sure. Would you stick in the eighties, or would you maybe go and step into the nineties and sort of homage some of some of those films? I feel like just because so many people have said the nineties, I feel like we have to do that now. So yes, <laughs> we're going to homage the nineties next. Do you have any 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 films like at the top of your head that you, you know you you would love? You know what your your favorites from from that era? 
I don't, I don't know, because I'd probably get it wrong just because sort of the movies that I was watching of sort of the late 80s to the early 90s, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know which, which to homage, but it would probably be more of like the action stuff. I think we'd want to take a different stance, like still stay in horror, but maybe instead of being referencing all these horror movies, maybe we would do some, some action movies and reference the Arnold Schwarzeneggers and stuff like that, which would be kind of funny. Yeah, no, definitely. And I guess, um, yeah, so we, you know, we've discussed this last year when um, we just, you know, talked about the Oak Room, you know, I was very much when I watched it, you know, I was craving like, you know, a nice sort of strong drink and, you know, some, you know, some, you know, some bar snacks and stuff, you know, what is the, uh, when people get the film and should and sit down to watch it, you know, what would, what would the best viewing experience be um, in your opinion? You know, what should they be eating? What should they be drinking? Who they should, who should they be with? Um, well, a, a stiff drink doesn't doesn't hurt for the for the comedy, and it's honestly it's like it's such a popcorn film, it's such a classic like big bag of popcorn, you know. It's like we we set out we didn't set out to reinvent the wheel. We just wanted to make it an exciting one to to roll with. So, I think I think stick to the stick to the the classics. Yeah, I mean a Chinese takeaway wouldn't wouldn't go and miss either. That's true. You know, I that would have been better. I, I should have said that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I again, when I watched, I think I had a craving for like a month for like Chinese food <laughs> until like finally my husband gave in and was like, "Okay, we can have a takeaway." So uh, there's a theme. There's a there's a theme developing here with your with your uh, with your work and me. Just horror, to, like, horror and food. Drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously we've you know we've been trapped you know with this pandemic. But have you guys you know started to look at you know where. Uh, what your next project might be, what the company's next project might be. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go to camera on something uh, mid to the end of September. So that'll be our our first shoot, and I and I think by then we'll st probably still be, you know, shooting in in the world of of COVID restrictions. But hopefully it's uh, it's a bit more lenient. But uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to get to to get back behind the camera. Uh, a little nervous to see how shooting during COVID is, but, uh, but excited to get back because we've been, yeah, we've been, I mean, we've been in post, but yeah, we've been down. We haven't shot anything since 2019, which is unusual for us. Mm. Yeah. And as you, with, uh, you know, with Vicious Fun arriving on, on Shudder, you know, have you uh, had a chance to uh, see any of the other films on their catalog? Because, you know, Shudder's got such a wide variety of, of, of genre films. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, um, I, I think I got a subscription to them a couple, couple years ago because it's a great place to 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 do research because they've got they've got such a and they pick up some some more of the independent stuff which I find is uh, you know where you can find some really cool um, really cool films. But uh, I just watched um, another Canadian director, but I just watched Cycle Gorman the other day. Because I thought that was sort of in the same same world as as Vicious Fun, and that was uh, that was pretty great. Yeah, it's very um, like a grown up Power Rangers He Man. Totally, that's a good yeah. way to put it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it had me. Yeah, it had me quite quite quickly. That one did. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know my sort of like, you know my final question um, would be you know what what do you hope that people take from watching Vicious Fun? Obviously, you know it's a very different film to to the Oak Room, um, you know, but what do you hope that they, they get from, from this one? Because I'm guessing, you know, people will be coming to watch this because they've seen the Oak Room and they're going to get something mm -hmm. very different, but what do you hope that they, you know, they take from this one? Well, I mean, I think uh, Oak Room was sort of a, uh, a sort of a journey into to storytelling and, and really sort of grounded in reality and, and sort of a, a, a hard, dark film this is sort of like the polar opposite. It's, you know, it's, um, it's, bra it's brain candy. It's, it's, you know, see, it's in the title. It's like, we made it to be fun. And we just hope that, that people are entertained. And especially like during these, you know, dark times and stuff, it's, uh, I think it's important for people to shut off and, and have a laugh. No, definitely. And I, I can't wait for, for, um, everyone I know to be able to actually see it. They championed it through um, Bright Vest Glasgow and, uh, you know, awesome. continue to champion it now because it is, I think I 
I think I've seen like four times. So it's oh, awesome. It's yeah. definitely got that. Uh, that's that a ring. that's a compliment right there. <laughs> so I will wish you the uh, the best of the luck with the uh, launch, and I'm sure we'll uh, cross paths again soon.